The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, Dow's down 57, S&P's down 4. My pleasure to be here. Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon Eastern Time, following Steve Rhodes. Great show, as always. Two shows, actually, as always. And thank you, Steve. And today being uh, Tuesday, of course, we've got Think or Swim's uh, Options Hour. We've got Daryl Rhodes. We've got Dave White. We've got Steve Hecht. And we've got Tom O'Brien back from vacation and uh, just roaring. So that should be fun all around. And um, while I'm thinking of it, I'm going to... Um, do a couple of things here. I, I just wanted to briefly talk about something that I noticed. University of Oregon. Now, I realize that it is a single person that's given, uh, him and his wife have given this incredible amount of money, $68 million for a gym. Bacteria resistant. I mean, unbelievable. But what that does in this particular uh, uh, phase of the mega bull market is that it says... We're going into hyper uh, reasonability. That is the period of excessivity that I've spoken about uh, in the paper that I wrote back in 1986-87 when I spoke about excessivity. Um, this is, I don't think in the history of mankind we've, well, I don't think, I know that in the history of mankind we have never had the number of people on earth that have got the benefit of capitalism and uh, democracy, while at the same time you absolutely cannot refute that the poor and the starving are still there. But if you look at the numbers, China, India, you can go around the globe, uh, even the um, United Nations has ha had a paper out talking about the overall um, increase in the in the level that denotes poverty. That, in other words, the, not the number of people in poverty, but the level of um, the level that goes not to the middle class, but at least goes to higher levels than it's ever been. If you talk about the um, some kind of a horizontal line that says underneath this level, it used to be X number of people that were living in poverty, and now it is uh, the level is a higher level with fewer people in poverty. That is as measured, you know, by numbers. But this, when I heard this, I said to myself, <clears throat> that is uncanny. <clears throat> You've got the, um, the Bugatti sold out of its, what was it, a half a million dollar cars. You've got things going on now that are absolutely at levels that we have never seen, prices of art, modern art, old art, and it used to be that I'd measure it by having passed the old, the, the impressionists, which always get the highest numbers. Now we're getting uh, modern art. In fact, you're starting to see people paying for stuff by new artists that there is no benchmark whatsoever other than what the previous person paid. I'm going to be following this as part of my Trends Watch section. I'm going to be following this really closely for the next six, eight months, or might be a little longer, but that's what I'm expecting. And we're going to see an increase. So what happens? You got, in the 1950s, you got Frank Lloyd Wright. He designs a mile-high skyscraper. Of course, it doesn't get done. It's now on the planning board by the Emirates, um, uh, who's got... Uh, Prince Walid, he's got a, an offer out for the first mile-high building, but he wants to have it as a conglomerate between cities or countries, and he's firms that would help put it together. So that's on the drawing board. And now you've got Elon Musk talking about this G-Force tube that would travel uh, between one and 3,000 miles an hour between L.A. and... L.A. and somewhere, I can't remember, I should know, we're hearing about it all the time. Um, so, this is the period where we start to see a rotation in the general market, and it's a rotation that goes through um, old 
sectors that are revitalized because they are the laggards and money fund managers will be looking for that. You've got new sectors like the 3D uh, printers um, just on fire, uh, in a good way, <laughs> rocket ship fire. Uh, you've got previous sectors, which hopefully my opening call, that's my service that goes out to my subscribers every single day starting about 6.15, 6.30, I start sending charts out. As I always send out the daily charts. This is the one of the Dow. What did it say? It said today, same as yesterday, so I didn't do anything. I just put two lines in, and I said, not much change from Monday's call, but the 15,340s, 20s, and zeros. That is right on 15,300 will be key support. What did the Dow go down to today? 15,342. That's that first level. Look what's happened. We've made a leg C. But actually, the move from 15,658 on the 2nd of August, the peak F top in the Chapman wave, down to the low that we've seen today, 15,342. Uh, big deal. 320 points uh, for a sell signal so far. A couple of things are taking place. One is that, yes, every single opportunity to sell off has been taken. But no, it is not the triple-digit moves that you see to the downside, which is absolutely normal when I get a very serious top. So, so far, I have to consider that it's just a daily sell mode. I haven't yet got the weekly to even give a sell signal yet because I have to wait until uh, uh, till the end of the uh, the end of the. Uh, End of the week, Friday. Uh, I got distracted. Susan Seattle says San Francisco. I think it is LA to San Francisco, but uh, I didn't want to give out any <laughs> incorrect information. Now, a couple of things. So you've got gold now bouncing quite strongly. I, I must tell you, I'm not impressed at all at the, uh, at the price movement in the monthly chart. Uh, the weekly chart is getting a little better. It's the daily chart that is really very nice at this particular point. We'll go through that in a moment. But the stocks, some of the stocks have had a fabulous, you know, when you come off a low, uh, say you come off a dollar, we had a stock at a twenty, which today uh, is trading at, uh, well, yesterday it hit. We don't have it anymore because I took one penny profit and didn't get back in. Dumb, but that's the way it goes. Uh, if I can find it right there, what did it hit? Oh, it hit yesterday, it hit. 151. <laughs> that is upsetting. And today's high is 145. Uh, 150. Um, yeah, we'll be back. Don't worry. It's plenty of time. But uh, that's a huge percentage move. A dollar. Uh, actually, the low was in the point. Point. I think it was point oh nine. What I was saying. One point. One point oh nine. No, one point eleven. So, yeah, that's a really strong percentage move. It gets a little harder as you're moving up to get those kind of percentages. However. That's important. Now, I, I just wanted to show you something here. In this message that I gave to my, my subscribers, what I sh uh, discussed was that the S&P was a tad stronger and the Qs were a little stronger than the S&P. The stochastic has pulled back really sharply from up in the 90s to down in the 25% area. So this is really a very, so far, I have to admit that it's, it's quite a mild move. I would have thought that this doji candle low of 15,258, which is still my target, would have been hit sooner by yesterday or Friday. So, okay, the tide has changed, but it hasn't changed yet in the weekly chart. Now, the MACD is still very, got a very wide beta between the fast-moving average and the slow-moving average. But look at this. This is what I said to subscribers. In my Dow Diamonds, I show this chart every single day. I showed the down channel that's been formed. I showed the nine-period exponential moving average. I showed that there was a possibility of another arch formation. I showed that the MACD was declining and the stochastic was still very flat, which said that we could very well go towards the trend line I think I, I haven't got it right in front of me, but I said 155, um, no, I'm sorry, 154.50s, 70s, and 90s are the two levels to watch. 154.50s was very important because that was that resistance where I didn't even get there and it's pulled back. It's so very tough for the market to keep moving. Spoke about the volatility index. The volatility index, now this is something, this is a heads up. There are two absolutely conflicting points of view that I have about the volatility index. One is, it's showing that there's still tremendous buying pressure. That's why we're rotating, and that's why the Qs have not yet made their big move to the downside, number one. 
Uh, no, number one with one A, and now one B says, which implies that that buying pressure could in fact contain the whole price of this correction to time rather than price. Here's, and that's part B. Number two is the opposite. That the volatility index, because it's only in the 12s, underneath the 13s, which is underneath the 14s, which is underneath the 15s, and only in the 15s do I really think we start to get a sustained, continuous um, rally failure, lower highs, lower lows, lower high, low lows, in the weekly charts. I don't yet see that. So it says... We might be looking at a situation where there is a kickoff to the downside of 300 points and maybe a little bit of a bounce, but the next move to the downside starts to move in the volatility index and for it to get to a major level where there's a, buy, a new buy signal generated in the daily charts, we need to see the volatility index up in the high teens and the low 20s. That says there's plenty of room in the down to the downside in the marketplace i right now i'm just going one step at a time we've got our short positions we are short the dow we are short the s p we are short a sector that has been an absolute fantastic winner and therefore it's taking a heck of a chance we managed to short the very top tick but you know what that means nothing if the tide hasn't changed yet, and the daily chart says it's only now beginning to give a sell signal to a possible sell mode. So when you're coming off a major top, we tried that again today. We, we shorted uh, via uh, uh, um, the actual ETF itself a sector that has been equally as powerful, but not quite as long as the uh, biotechs, but in fact has been really, really, really strong. And I don't know, maybe we got the right move, maybe we haven't. But using the Chapman methodology, we just had to go for it. So far, it's indicating that we've got a little bit, a tiny little bit of comfort, but we've got a very tight stop. So that's the way it is. Now, we're also along the golds. Uh, we're along gold via uh, an ETF uh, as if it was the GLD. What's important about that is that we're trying to identify sectors as well as stocks that we have because I think right now it's easier to get the sector right and the individual stocks can have differing performances. So you want to try to pick the stock that has the best percentage potential, but as a general concept, I want to get the sectors that I think are either weakening or strengthening. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> with that, the Dow is uh, Dow is down minus 42. The S and P is down three. The, the incumbent index is down eight. Uh, gold is um, gold is I missed it here. Uh, we'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians out. Uh, gold is down eight. I'll be right back. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries. The ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800 Eight five one zero five one one. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger the Nation's L. So the Dow is down 36 at uh, 15,368. The S&P is down 222 at 1687. You've got the uh, Comp Index minus 6 at 3663. Now... Um, gold is down 12 at 13.21. Let's just do this. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's finish the numbers. Uh, silver is up 0.07 at 21.41. Platinum is up 8 at 15.03. High-grade copper is up uh, 10 cents at 3.1 uh, up one at uh, 3.30. Uh, crude oil is uh, unchecked at 106. And we've got bonds down a dollar and 21.30 seconds at 132.16. Man, I tell you. Um, as long as the fix is low and bonds are not seeing money uh, go back in, uh, that, in a sense, is part of the story here. It's part of what's going on, that the rotation is taking some sectors down, others are, are holding up, and that's why we haven't dropped uh, the five or 600 points. That I, I th That's the way we should have been right now. So if I'm looking at this, um, question then when I look at the crude oil chart yes I have a chance but let me just do this I wanted to say that the dollar is up 50 cents now let's put this together you've got gold higher with the dollar yesterday the dollar's strong again today people have asked me is it possible that they could go in opposite directions and what I've said there are times where they actually go together there are many times when they're in mirror image 
It used to be absolutely they were a mirror image for years. But there was a, within that there were periods where they went together, and there were other periods, longer periods, where they went to this, in the same direction. So the answer is yes and no. You know, it just, uh, I, I would think separately. I'd think the dollar chart, and i think the gold chart. Do it that way. Don't lock in on something that forces you to think a certain way. Be enough, be, have enough flexibility. I didn't want to change the chart that I'm looking at because I had a question. Yesterday I had a caller, Ellen, who wanted to know about um, uh, Stratus Limited. It is a um, uh, patent fused deposition modeling. It's a modeling 3D printing and prototyping uh, company. And right at the time that she called it, the price was at about, I believe it was about 100.35 or something like that. And I said, start a position right now. And if it then pulls back and then takes out the high of the day, that's yesterday, um, for a new peak, you can add another very small trading position. Well, we haven't had that peak. This is still leg B in SSYS trading at 101.82. It opened today at uh, round number 103, went to 104.34. That's a four-point gain. So what happens is it pulls back and now it makes a low of uh, 100.50. And I suspect, based on the 120-minute chart, that if it, uh, the question was, well, what should I do about those, that particular sector, DDD was actually the choice. I said, no, I like SSYS right now. It's the best one. And I would look at it between 1977 as a trade um, and just use a trading stop as it moves higher. As a position, the question was, can I have, buy it as a position play for a number of just looking out, uh, uh, intermediate term? And I said... Because of the market conditions, I just don't know if I can give you that kind. It's at all-time highs. It's probably recycled to leg C up in the, in the monthly chart. This is SSYS. Um, so I can't. I would just go one step at a time. And then if there's ever a really strong pullback in the 90 to 85 area, that's when you can reassess, and that's where you could probably think of a longer-term position. So that, I just wanted to cover that. 1961 is an unpaid moving average support. If it dips a little bit under that, I think it's going to go to leg C and leg D. Now, this is going to be very important because DDD is kind of failing under the previous high, locked in into a, a rectangle formation with a lot of resistance in the 51 to 52 and a half area. And... Uh, X O N E. I don't follow this one that closely. I always look at the chart, but ah, oh, well, this is the one that is very interesting now because it's gone into the wick of the candle of the high of peak F. In the chap wave, peak F is very important. On the 9th of July, it went to 73.57. X O N E, whatever it's called. Uh, the X1 company is making a U-shaped uh, formation. I suspect it's going to go to leg E just above 75.37, another two points above. And um, that's what I'm looking at there. Now, a couple of questions we had. We'll go to the, uh, the currencies and all in a moment. But what I want to do is to answer questions in the den. The one was, would I look at crude oil? So I'm going to go to, just for the moment, CL. This is the continuous contract. I'm just finding... I don't know the different months, and I, they trade differently. I'm just going to stick with this for the moment because a chart pattern is a chart pattern. I found that regardless of uh, forward months or backward months, the patterns are the patterns. This is making a double cup formation, the crude oil chart. It's like the M, the, the H that goes, lowercase H that goes to an M. This is a Y, inverted Y that goes to a soft W formation or two U patterns. I'll talk about that as soon as we get back. 877-927-6648 is the number to call. Love to hear from you. Be right back. Off. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals, and then specific trade recommendations including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. 
To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. We're looking at crude oil. I'm looking at a number of different things. I'm looking at the USO, which is the United States Oil Fund LP, LP, LP. I don't know what to do. Ah, Larry Pesavento. That's what it stands for. And uh, the peak D top at 38.62 on the 19th of July saw a pullback to a trough ABC. Trough ABC. Let me type that in. But it's actually a better. It's a better um, pattern for me to be looking at in terms of. Um, what needs to be done if this USO contract uh, ETF, I probably an ETN, goes above, it's at 37.76 right now, USO. If it climbs above 38.25, then the 38.41 high of the 1st of August will be the, with the next level to watch. If it breaks that, then I suspect it's going to touch or just go a fraction above 38.62. If it goes to 38.62, two things have happened. It's claimed back the 200 period exponential moving average, which I've said for a while is a magnet now. It was before it was, it was a repellent. Now it's a magnet. And it suggests that at some point USO is going to go to the 30, uh, 39.50 to the 40.36-ish area and then pull back and treat the 38 moving average, uh, the 200 period moving average at 38.50 as some kind of a a, a, a bounce um, 
propellant rather than a repellent line, but it's all contingent upon that moving. Now let's go to the continuous contract. Continuous contract says there's a pattern here, which is quite clearly the double cup formation. That's the one cup goes to peak E at uh, this is the December contract at 90, on the 19th of July, 108.93 pulls back to 102, no, 102, yeah, 102.67, rallies, fails to make a new high, 108.93, uh, 108.82, just a couple of cents below, pulls back even sharper, makes a lower low at 102.22 on the 8th of August, now it's trying to rally. This is usually a failure pattern. Now there's another pattern. If I look at the Z, this is uh, December, I've got a pattern that says, hey, this is that oval pattern, but in this particular case, it isn't quite the stalk leg formation because it made a lower low um, on the se on the 8th of August. It has have some of the same concepts. And what it says is, this is a pattern that at some point should make an arch formation. It might be doing that right now. It could, but it could spike to just a nominal new high and then come back and retest both the 102.33, the 9 period moving average, and the low that was just made of 99.65. So everything I'm looking at says crude oil might be able to rally a little further, but the pattern is saying it's in a trading range, and even if it makes a nominal new high, unless that nominal new high is not nominal and it goes to 106, it's at 103.12 right now, but if it only goes to 104.90, 105.30, and then pulls back very sharply, it's going to retest the loan. Then it's a stuck in this trading band. Yes, the good question is, is that the stalk? That's the formation that I'm talking about. It is a better pattern to look at, the, at this one than any of the others. So in a way, it could be a stalk formation. That is a high-level consolidation. It's going to work a little bit better in the weekly chart. Let me put that up. So weekly chart, let me put that in here. This is the pattern we look, not quite, you know, it just doesn't have all the characteristics I like to look for. But I'm going to put it in because it is a potential. So I'm just putting it right there. It needs more time. And that's what I think it needs, more time to the sideways move. Uh, trading band is forming with maybe a two-point upside and a two-point to three-point downside parameter. So I hope that helps you. Uh, I'm not sure if there was a trade put on. You want to put a trade on? I don't have a trade for this right now. I would think of shorting it if it had a pop about another one, point and a half. And if it dropped about a point or two, I'd say, hey, if it doesn't hold this low right here and the December contract, if it doesn't hold, let's call it 99. If it goes to 98, that's a failure. And then I wanted to do, I wanted to draw this in and just say, that is something you cannot ignore, this kind of pattern right here. That is an arch formation. But I need the evidence, and right now I'm just saying these are the possibilities. All right, now let's go back to this. I wanted to show it to you. EUR USD made a peak D. How powerful is a peak D? Well, as you know, the Chapman wave we've come across just in the last four days, five days, we must have come across at least uh, 40 of them that I've shown. So there's a peak F in the euro back on the uh, one. 41.53, back on the 19th of uh, June, pulls back to 1.27. That was on, I should have typed that in because I'm always going to be talking about a 7.9 on the 7th of July. And then it goes to the most recent height, peak D. So it comes down in a trough D. It goes back up in a peak D, 1.3. This is 8th of 8th, 8th. Okay, that's 8. So the eighth it makes us high, and now it's the third bar of a decline, and it's now below the nine period exponential moving average, probably going to close underneath it. As the MACD turns down, stochastic had a right side failure. Look at this. One, two. Now look at these. Look at that peak C. Look at the peak D. Look at the difference in the technicals. So I'd be very careful here. Right there. Oh, okay, if you're looking at Tiger TV, I made that yellow. Maybe I'll just better change the color a little bit. There. Uh, what am I doing here? Okay. Close. There. Um, so, be careful. Uh, trading range for the euro, as I said before. Uh, right now, it's in a very short term. I haven't yet got the sell. I, I might get it by tomorrow, a sell signal. And then I might go immediately to a sell mode right now. It says there's a good chance of a sell signal being generated. Look at the uh, dollar. That's what I wanted to show. 
Dollar's having a nice move above the nine period moving average. Now this is the first time that I'm looking at the dollar and saying, hey, I like that candle. <clears throat> this is a good candle. Yesterday's candle was a start. Now is that how does that coincide <clears throat> when I look at um, so the weekly chart on the dollar is just improving. It's not, nothing great. You've had a V-shaped top. Now you're getting a potential Eiffel Tower bottom with a higher low. We're going to watch this real closely. I don't. Is the currency, the dollar is not out of the woods just yet. Let's put the uh, GC contract, the GCZ, right there, gold. Now look at this. Gold went to a peak D. It rallied. It did not take out 1349.20. As far as I'm concerned, 1343.70 was the high yesterday. It has to close decisively on Friday, this Friday, above 134.20 in the December contract. Nice action in the daily. Very nice action. Weekly, definitely improving. Monthly, <laughs> hit the two. Oh, I meant to, I've been talking about this before, and then I forgot to bring it back as a, such an important criteria. One of the reasons why we wanted to go into the goals on the, on the long side and why we bought the gold contract uh, via the ETF is because the 200-period moving average was hit exactly. Look at that. Look at this. It missed it in the continuous contract. Um, it missed it. It only went to that doji candle. It went above the doji candle of um, March of 2010. 1185.60 was the high. Um, and here the low was 1179.40 on the continuous contract. So it just, that doji was touched. That was important. So now it's, it's, it's not bad action in the monthly, but you know, the month is just, you know, we're halfway through the month. Uh, we're not even halfway through the month. So this is the pattern I've been talking about. An H goes to an M in the gold contract. But the gold stocks might perform better than the gold contract. We might be seeing that. So I just wanted to touch that. And I'll just do SLV for the moment. I had a question about that. SLV, nice action. Bumping up into the resistance leg C in the uh, weekly. This is leg E right there at that resistance line. Leg E in the Daily, and it could certainly pull back a little bit here. I just don't see any reason why it shouldn't. Maybe it's a 20.63 having hit a high today of 20.76. I see no reason why it can't come back to 20.20 .20 to the 19.60 area. 19.75 is a 200 period exponential moving average. And here's the thing that really is important. A very quick A to B to C in the weekly charts. In fact, it's one of the quickest you can get. From a low bar, you've gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. D is the quickest you can get in a seven wave move, but this is pretty close at C. But it's still very low, and I spoke about that candle. Until silver can get a protracted move above the high of the week of 21st of June, where the high was 2120 and it just plummeted down, it has to close above that for me to become very impressed with the weekly chart of silver. But that doesn't mean to say you can't be long and looking at potential upside moves. All right, so before the voice just runs right out, I wanted to also, what I had done is I showed the e-minis at the very beginning. I always show, if you're looking at Tiger TV, our subscribers to the, uh, the den get to see this much quicker. They get to see all of us doing all our work, our technical work beforehand. Look, 1705 to yesterday's low of 1675.25. Let me type that in. 1675.25. So, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a 30 point move, but it's nothing what I would expect. I would have expected a much deeper pullback. That's not to say it can't happen. That's the reason why I'm saying watch the volatility index, because it might be that only when or if. The E mini start to take out the 1660 level that the VIX actually wakes up. And once it wakes up and goes into the uh, 16s, 17s, that's going to be momentum to the upside. So we've got to watch that real closely. If it just hangs around here, it's going to say, hey, mister, you thought we were going to go down sharply, but you're wrong. We're just going sideways. And that's what's happening right now. But look at this. I wanted to show it because I wanted to show all the different formations here. Peak uh, D in the... Um, 120 minute chart is 1705. It pulls back trough A, trough B, trough C, trough D, trough E, trough F. And that F gets a nice rally all the way to peak A, B, C. But then it goes to something that's, I, this is what I'm going to do when I'm, when I'm teaching my uh, newest 
Master Trader Series. We've discussed a lot, as I have been over the past year, the C1, C2, C3 failure pattern that looks like a D, but it just misses by a penny making that D. That can be considered a sell signal to sell mode, and that's exactly what happened. goes down to another D at 16.75.25, and then rallies peak A, peak C, and if the C fails, it's very negative to fail at a C in the Chapman Wave methodology. So that says unless the high of <clears throat> the high of uh, a close yesterday of sixteen ninety four is taken out, there's going to be a problem. That we should go lower and we should retest the low of sixteen seventy five twenty five. Now look at this. I thought this was fascinating. So we go from this daily and one hundred twenty minute chart to the IYT. IYT, peak F at 119.45 with a little doji close the following day. And then what does it do? It plummets. This is a very sharp move to the downside, which really confirms the peak F. And it happened to be peak E with the same silent candle, uh, doji candle, um, in the 120-minute uh, chart at the high of 119.45. What is the IYT? It is the iShares Transportation Average ETF trading at 114.66 minus 131 after hitting 119.45 just two weeks ago. Monthly chart, leg D, into just missing the up channel resistance at inside track and weekly has made a peak E and it's pulling back and everything about this says there should be a peak E that pulls back quite sharply in the transportation index. So hey, that's quite interesting, I thought. Now we're missing one thing. I want you to talk about the TLT. <coughs> no, we're missing two things, copper and the TLT. So the TLT's made a lower low. It went th right through the 105 round number support. It went to 104.92. And this is the bar that has to bounce back or there's real, real trouble in paradise because it is a big cup formation. It's actually a handle in a cup. So look at this. That 106 level goes back. Well, it's now taken out. So we have to look at the next one, which is 106.08. Oh, we took it out. We went to 104.92. Wow. <laughs> there isn't much support after this. Next support is way down at 93.14. I, I don't want to go there just yet, other than to say, if you're looking at the TLT, that the action over the last two sessions, very negative. And that's saying that even if there's a big rally in the stock market and bond, my, my funds go back into bonds, into the TLT, wow, there's a lot of work to do to get back even to 108, the nine period weekly moving average. 106 is the uh, daily, 106.48 daily, nine period moving average. 108.38 weekly, and then you get the 200 period, which is at 110, and you've just had a huge crossover in the weekly of the 9 period under the 200, and it says you got a little time before you can reverse back up. So I'm going to be watching this real closely. Now the final thing I want to look at is at HG Copper. Copper, huge move up to leg D, huge move on the daily basis weekly, yeah, <laughs> we've seen this before. We've seen this this movie before. So this is leg A, B, C. It should go to D, and it should try to touch 3.37 of the continuous contract, the 200 period moving average. This is now a magnet. So I think copper is going high as a result. We have a copper stock doing very nicely right now. Um, and, and this is a dichotomy. Wait a minute. If I'm looking at copper starting to act better, and yet I'm, a, I'm somewhat negative on the market, that doesn't make sense. Well, let me explain what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a shorter-term sell-off in the market, which is underway. I don't know if it will extend to the downside until certain levels are taken out. Certainly the 13,250s area in the Dow will be very important. And 16, uh, I'd have to say 1667 to 1663 in the S&P. So I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Hey, it's time for some calls. Give me a call. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, the opening call, 
Then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. Tag Editions out uh, Dow's down 25 SP down $1.29. Uh, not bad actually, but it still hasn't got upside momentum. We're going to go to uh, Mohammed in Glendale, California. Hi Mohammed, how are you? Hi Basil, how are you? Very well, thank you. Great, Basil. Uh, wondering if you could take a look at Pulte Homes again. Uh, wondering how much more weakness do you see in this stock? So folks, we're looking at PHM, Pulte Group Inc. It is used to be called Pulte Homes. They changed the name, and I put your Pulte, Pulte Fruit Inc., but it's not. It's Group Inc. Home Builders. Uh, this, has been, this is a very interesting stock. I wonder if I've got all that notation. Oh, don't believe it. I have this all notated, but I've done the most recent one with a monthly chart going to a peak D from the low of uh, 3.29. It went all the way to 24.47. Uh, in May of this year, peak D in the Chapman Way. That's where you've got to be careful. And what does it do? It pulls back sharply in the monthly chart. Uh, so now it's trading at $15.31, uh, a, a new, uh, what is this, a 12-month low, I think it is. Maybe it's not 12 months, 8-month low. You've got to be careful. So in the weekly chart, um, 
also a peak D, that's a right arm extension, and it goes to 2447. Now it's in leg B to the downside. The monthly is only in leg A. Now, I happen to like sometimes, I like a very quick, sharp pullback that is only trough A, trough B, and then it's off. So, we, But the weekly, the daily chart says, oh, no, be careful. Stochastics at 5%, there's no strength. The MACD, last time we looked at it, I said I was a little, a little concerned, right? You were correct. Yeah, and, and I'm still a little concerned. You know what I'm looking at? I don't know if it's going to get there, but I think it's going to get real close. The low bar of the week of the 16th of November of 2012 was 14.55. The 200-period moving average is at 13.74. My suspicion is it's going to go, and then I've got a downtrend line which coincides. I think it's going to try for between 15 and 14. I don't know if it yet, whether it's going to touch that 200 period moving average of 13.74. Here's my recommendation. The technicals are starting to improve a little bit. I don't think you're missing anything. If you got in now at 15.29 and it pulled back and it went to 13.74, that's a dollar fifty. That's a 10% risk. I don't really want to take a 10% risk to the downside. I'd rather miss a little bit on the upside. So I'm going to suggest have a little patience. Let's wait the day out and um, call me. Today is Wednesday, uh, Tuesday. Let's, let's look at it again Thursday. If there's any sign of strength on Thursday, I might suggest taking a small position. But I need to see how this is going to work out. The 120-minute chart, I'm sure, is showing a better sign. No, the 120-minute chart says it'll be a little care. Let's wait two days. Call me if you can, and you're able to on Thursday. Let's look at it again. And all I would recommend is a starter, a small starter position. I would only want to add to it on strength. But let's hold off a little. I don't think you lose, you lose it, you're going to lose much at all other than maximum 80 cents uh, from where it is right now. So let's hold off and we'll look at it again on Thursday if you're able to. Okay? Okay, thank you so much, Basil. Thank you, Mohammed. Mohammed and Glenda looked at uh, Palti Homes, and I've looked at all the home builds. I had a, an email today from a subscriber looking at Toll, and I have to tell you, unless Toll works right now, it's at 3156, unless it works absolutely straight away and it's able to clear 3265, the high of yesterday, I mean clear it, and then go to 3291, the 200-period moving average, I, I, yeah, it could bounce just a little bit, but I, I don't yet see a signal. I haven't got a signal to say that it's going to go from a buy to a buy signal or even a buy mode. So I'm holding off on these guys right now. Folks, um, stay tuned. You've got, what is today? Tuesday, you've got the options out. It should be great to think of some options out. Great people there. And I will be back tomorrow. I uh, know I'll be back this afternoon with Tom O'Brien at 420. So stay tuned. Have a great day, and I'll see you a little later. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.